Welcome to a Fables a Day in which the archivist reviews an issue of Fables a Day up till the final issue, where he will undoubtedly cry like a baby. And there is no restraint on spoilers, so if that's a problem for you, well then go read the series and then come back. On with the show. The Literals, number one. Start as deep into the story as you can. Part three of The Great Fables Crossover. And now we get to follow Kevin Thorne throughout his writer's block. While he is writing things, he has what all writers have when they're trying to force a story. He doesn't know how to start it. So he invites the genres over. Which, if the name doesn't give it away, they're embodiments of genres. There's western, blockbuster, mystery, horror, romance, science fiction, fantasy, literature, comedy, and noir. He's trying all that he can to get his juices flowing. Elsewhere, Snow, Bigby, and a few of the other literals are driving to New York City. Bigby needs to catch Thorne's scent from his old apartment so they can track him. Back with Kevin, he's striking out with the narrow views of the genres, with none of them really giving him any ideas that fit his idea. So he writes two idea men into his story. Old Sam, a fable from the Little Black Sambo stories, but mostly a character from Jack of Fables, and Hansel. Yes, that Hansel, who's been a thorn in the side of our hero fables for some time now. In Manhattan, Snow and Bigby go to Kevin Thorne's old apartment. But it's rigged to blow! Oh no! But they at least caught his scent before then. Though Thorne is now ready to write such a vengeance on Bigby. As Snow, Bigby, and the rest head towards the Catskills, Bigby needs Snow to pull over. He rushes into a ditch, but his body starts contorting. His face shifts, his knuckles get hairier. Bigby Wolf is now a talking monkey. Detective Chimp be damned. And this is what I love about this part of the story. Anytime we focus on Kevin Thorne, he's basically dealing with your average writer problems. Although, since he's magical and this is a, you know, fantasy story, he can write up genres to help him. He can get idea men right off the bat. And it works really well in showing the personification of what a writer has to go through to write. And I'm fairly certain that Sturges and Willingham both put into their own little fun on what Kevin Thorne can do. But let's keep this ball rolling. 